Then you can go ahead and hit this arrow if you want to run this syntax. And we have output. So first of all, you're going to see the syntax that went into creating the output. It's going to tell you what the analysis, the specifics of the analysis were. And then we see we have a heading here. It's going to tell us our basic information. So this was our dependent variable. Our probability distribution was Poisson, and our link function was the log link. So that kind of allows us to be sure that we conducted the model we wanted to conduct. This part here lets us know how much missing data we had and how many uh, data points were actually included in the overall model out of the possible number of data points in the data set. So here we see um, there were 13 people excluded um, with uh, list-wise deletion um, because they were missing some piece of data. Now here we can kind of look and see what our categorical variable um, yielded in terms of how it was split up. We obviously had a lot more women in the study than we did men. Um, so that can be helpful um, if you're thinking about, um, you know, in terms of what your your breakdown was of your factors. And then data about your continuous variables that you have in the data set. So you can see the minimum, maximum, so the range, and the mean, and the standard deviation. Luckily, we see here that our variable was centered as we were hoping. So now we have um, the goodness of fit for the overall model. And further down here, you have the omnibus test also for the overall model. So these initial ones are going to be important for us judging the model, the Poisson model, as a whole. Um, and what we're going to want to look at here is definitely um, trying to be, if we're comparing different kinds of models, for example, we're going to be using the AIC or the AICC, which corrects for smaller sample sizes. You have Bayesian information criteria as well. Now all of these information criteria are basically going to um, be comparable to other non-nested models. We can compare this model to other models. Um, we just need to see which of these numbers for this model and whatever our alternate model is, is lower. And that would be a better fitting, more parsimonious model. On the other hand, these values here are, this is the log likelihood um, that was used in determining the chi-square um, outcome that we'll see below here in the omnibus test. And these are also some other different statistics, statistics that we need to be looking at. Now our deviance really shouldn't be too much above 2. We see our deviance is a little bit higher here than it maybe should be, which is kind of our first indication that maybe this model isn't the best fitting model that we could possibly have achieved. So it'll be important to remember some of these goodness of fit statistics here, um, comparing them to our later negative binomial model. Our omnibus test indicates that the overall model is significant, so we can go ahead and interpret the different pieces within our model at this point. And that's comparing it to the intercept only model, so without any of the variables in it and just including the intercept. At this point, we have tests of model effects as well, and this goes through each of our variables and tests it against the intercept only model. Um, and you can see that's for this particular model, very similar to our parameter estimates. Um, so we can just go ahead and go down to the parameter estimates at this point. And what we're going to see here is these are our different parameters. And you have the parameters broken down in terms of the factors we have here. We have the female gender and the male gender. And we have our centered global attitude scale. And this is our interaction. And why the reason why they break this up into both male and female is so that you can um, have the hypothesis test for um, both groups of people. And it's pretty clear which group it is for. So for this particular group, we're looking at the outcomes for women. This is our unstandardized coefficient. This looks very similar to OLS regression output in SPSS. And our standard error for the unstandardized coefficient and that uh, associated confidence interval. Then we have the walled chi-square that um, for this particular um, parameter, gender, and the degree of freedom. And this would indicate that our p-value is below 0 0.001. So that's a good sign that gender is um, contributing to the model uniquely. 
And here we have our exponentiated coefficient. Now that's why it says EXPB, so that's exponentiated unstandardized coefficient. So this is the exponentiated coefficient, which is also uh, called the incident rate ratio, and our confidence interval associated with that. Now what this basically means is, um, it's always harder to interpret when it's below one, but incident ratio, rate ratios run from zero um, to one if there's a an inverse association between this particular parameter and the outcome variable. And anything at one would mean there's no significant relationship. So it's a one-to-one -one effect. Um, and then anything above one, uh, once you've you know, the confidence interval is beyond the one, or the neutral point, um, would indicate a positive relationship between this predictor and the outcome variable. So what this means is that women are drinking less, um, or are, are, you know, drinking at rates that are lower than men for this particular um, sample, which I guess is not really surprising um, because we do know that about the literature that women do drink less. Now women these days are still reaching higher BACs um, or equal BACs with men, um, but in terms of how much alcohol women are actually consuming, it is somewhat less. On the other hand, here we have um, the centered mean global scale, and again we have all of our um, unstandardized uh, information, and then we have um, our incident rate ratio that indicates that for each one point increase in global attitudes, um, and that's on a scale from one to nine, um, the rate of um, drinks consumed during the peak drinking occasion goes up by about 30 percent. So you can see that right here. Um, so, or it's at a rate um, at 1.3 times higher um, for each one point increase on that scale. So that's a significant predictor as well. Now so far this is making sense. Women are drinking less than men. Um, if people have more positive attitudes about alcohol, they're drinking more. And then our final uh, set of parameters here is the uh, interaction between gender and uh, global attitudes. Now what you can see here is the um, test is not quite significant, so this is really a marginal effect, and whether or not a person should interpret that is really kind of a, a question that, um, you know, is, is questioned um, and looked upon with some controversy in the literature. But basically, just so you know kind of what's happening in terms of the exponentiated coefficient, this means that um, for women in particular, um, more positive attitudes about alcohol indicates a slightly lower level of drinking, just slightly lower level than drink of drinking for each one point increase on the global scale. And that's how we can interpret that output. Now, 